WebSockets are a way to establish a persistent connection between a client and the server. It's a bidirectional data, which means that the client can send data to the server, but also the server can push data towards the client. And it is particularly useful for any kind of multiplayer experience or, I don't know, creating a chat engine or something like that. And maybe implementing that with Solid Start is easier than you think. Welcome back. And I'm Achila. I'm a member of the Solid DX team. And today we're going to explore this new feature that's still experimental within Nitro, which is our server runtime. But it is already possible for you to use that with Solid Start app. And we're going to create a little chat app. So the difference is that we're going to go a step further into just establishing a bidirectional data between one server and one client, which is a default for a WebSocket. We are going to also broadcast to multiple clients, which makes things a little bit more interesting and more like real worldy, I would like to say. Um, so yeah, um, let's jump into the code. So as usual, we're in the code base and we got the app or apps running next to it. And as you can see by the by what I have on my file tree, it's pretty much a standard solid start app. There's nothing else than the files that usually are there. But now we already got like this little chat thing going on. So for example, I can say from here, hello. And on the other side, I get a response. Uh, I get the message on the other one. And I can talk to myself as things go on. So let's have a look about how I did it. The first thing is on the app config. We need to pass some instructions first to Nitro. And Nitro is in our server. So we're going to enable this experimental feature, which is WebSocket. With that out of the way, we need to then instruct Vinci about the new route that we're just about to create. So this router, I'm going to call WS from WebSocket. It's the HTTP router, so don't mix that with the protocol. And it's of the type HTTP. Don't confuse that with the protocol. It's an HTTP router as opposed to an API or an SPA router in this case. And I'm going to pass the path of the handler in this case. So this is where the file that's going to handle whatever request comes to this endpoint. And it's going to be of a target server. And the base path of this router is going to be WS. And that's enough to instruct solid start to know that it has a WebSocket. And so with this out of the way, we can jump in to this file over here where I'm going to handle the server side. So in here, we're going to handle the WebSocket server. And at first, WebSockets are meant to be from one to one connection. So the way that we're doing here on my on on our apps is that we need to broadcast this message to others. So so by default we're going to re respond only to the peer that made the call but but in this case we're going to store a set of clients and then we're going to propagate or broadcast this message to all of the clients. So that's why up here, we got this little client set that right now is empty. And we also have a little map of client names because as you can see, I'm using this unique names generator function to come up with this like cheeky names like lengthy snake or special pheasant. So uh, they change as we go. So as I refresh this page, this now becomes an illegal rooster. And you can see the lengthy snake left the chat but illegal rooster just joined the chat. Same way I can go out and special pheasant left the chat and early donkey arrived. So now what we got in this case is uh, in this unique names generator, 
we get uh, we generate it based on an objective and an animal, and we use space as separators and we store them uh, capitalized. And then once that happens, I grab the peer ID and I set a name to it, right? And then I add the peer to my client's set. So this is enough for me to store the client and a si uh, set a name to it. Then this is the propagation. This is how it happens. So I have a for each that goes through my entire set. And then I do some fancy stuff here. If um, the client ID is the same as the peer ID, so the one that's receiving the message this time is the same one that's causing me to want to broadcast a message, then I'm going to say, yeah, that's you. So welcome. And if it's not the same, then I'm going just going to send, yeah, this person here just joined the chat. So this is how I get the messages about having joined the chat and the welcome. So this is happens every time a WebSocket connection is open. Now, every time I send a message, what I'm going to get is, um, first I'm going to log to my server right here. So you can see that I get the message one and I get the message two at these times. And then I'm going to broadcast again. So it's the same logic. I'm just reapplying it over and over again. So for the sake of this guide, I didn't abstract it away. So we can have each one of those messages, uh, each one of those methods easier to understand and for us to see the whole logic in it. And so again, um, if the client matches the peer, I'm going to say, yeah, this, in this case, we don't really need. So um, I could have, like before, we could have something like you said this or you or something like that, but we're not. So in this case, we can just uh, actually keep it simpler and that would work in the same way. So now if parallel Python sends something then uh, I get the same message and so on. And then Colossal Cardinal can reply, all good. Okay, so that's for the message. So that's how we broadcast a message. The server receives a message and broadcasts to the others. And then whenever the connection is closed, so that means that either one of these two close the window or refresh the page, then this uh, this client's going to close and then we open one again. So what happens is we are going to say, oh, if it's the same, again, we don't need to say, uh, or like, again, here we have the U. Or the, uh, so this client left. Uh, and then on the other hand, I have that person left the chat as well. This is how the server works in terms of receiving the messages and broadcasting them. If there's an error, then this is where you want to actually uh, log the error somewhere in your error tracking system, right? Oh, I got a statistical Wolverine, nice. So that's it for the server. And now we can go and look at our routes. So the first thing that's going to happen is uh, this is my index route. And then the index route is going to start this WebSocket client and I'm going to pass the URL. So in this case, this is a different, it's going to be a different URL if you are in a production server because hopefully you're on HTTPS. So this means the protocol needs to be a secure WebSocket connection. And then of course you don't want to point to your local host, you want to point somewhere else. And you don't want to start uh, WebSocket connection if you are on the server. So in this case, if it, uh, solid start server side rendered re app, so what we want to do is let solid start know that no, don't do anything with this WebSocket client. This is a client only component. So the way it works is we have this client only helper that's going to 
let SolidStart know that they should not render this on the server. And then it receives this fun function callback and the import is a dynamic import that is the actual file that we have on our code base. And now is where the things get interesting. So the first thing um, you can see here is that I'm using two solid primitives. So the first one is to create a signal from a DOM event. So I'm using the create event signal because that's how WebSockets communicate through emitting message events. And then we have this other primitive to help us manage our WebSocket. So I have the create WebSocket and I have the create WebSocket state, which you're going to see in a moment. Finally, I got the four that's going to list all the messages and the effect. And then we also have some store. So as you can see, my component, it receives the initial socket URL. So every time it renders the component for the first time, we're going to use the prop that we receive and create a web socket. Once we have a web socket, we're going to create this web socket state. And that state uses the enum that comes from the native web socket uh, type from the DOM. And it has these four enums. So for connecting, when the connection is open, so it's connected, when it's closing, and when it's closed, which means it's already disconnected. So the socket state is going to be an index within this array. So that's why the order matters in this case. And then I'm creating a derived state for me to only deal with uh, the actual value instead of numbers in this case. Finally, then we create the event signal. So we pass the socket and we're going to listen to the message event in this. We can create signals for all, everything else and uh, let things go on the, on the front end. But in this case, I'm trusting my broadcasting to send me back the message based on whatever event is being sent. And then finally, I create the message from the data in this, uh, this one. So this is just to make things a little bit clearer for me to deal with. Lastly, we create a store, which is just an array of all the messages. And so the effects going to every time there's a new um, socket message, we're going to then with produce, we're going to push it to uh, inside the socket messages array. And that's it. So now we have a list of them and that means we can just render them like this. So in case you don't know, our four has a fallback, which means that if there is nothing there, we're going to just render no messages yet, which is going to lead to an um, invalid DOM because it's going to put plain text in inside a U uh, unordered list. So this should suffice in this case. So now we have valid DOM in every case. Then if there is a message, so for each message, we're going to paste a list. And because we are um, already pushing to the last one, it's going to just come in a very nice way uh, in, the, in the bottom. And then this is how we're going to handle sending the message. So first of all is if the connection is not open, so my client's not connected to the WebSocket server, it's not possible to send a message. And then I have a little text area, not control or anything. And on the form submission, we're going to then grab the form data event and grab the message from there and just send upstream. In this case, it's just a string, so we don't need to do any other fancy things. And that's how it works. So as you can see here, I have two separate instances and it all works. Mm, so excellent e-rig, just talk to stable perch. And that's all folks. So 
Now you know how to use WebSockets with Solid Start. And that was it. I it was faster than I was actually imagining. Uh, so I hope you have liked it. And if there is anything else you want to talk about, um, let me know in the comments below if you have any feedback, if you have any follow up questions to this, or if any API in the Solid Docs got your head scratching. Let me know. I'm always lurking in the Solid JS Discord and I'm keeping an eye on the comments. If nothing else, I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.